Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Today I am working on the long arm. I have the English Ivy quilt on the machine at the moment. So I want to show you what I am doing with this quilt. I'm going to work on this outside border in uh, the English Ivy quilt. And what I have in my machine for thread is a signature 100% cotton 40 weight and the color is vintage rose so it is a little bit lighter than the background of the print but I think it goes pretty well. This is going to be a freehand floral leaf pattern and this is one that I use sometimes um, well I have used in the past when I was doing an overall from the front of the machine and I haven't done one of those in quite a while but um, this is very similar to that design so uh, let's see if this will show up don't know if it will but we'll, we'll give it a try and let's see I'm going to go on stitch regulated mode And what I'm quilting in here is um, a cabbage rose. So I've got one rose in here and I'm going to do an outline, an echo. And a leaf. Another leaf. And I think I'll do swirls in here too. Okay, so what I want to do is fill the space evenly. I, I don't want it to be um, dense in one area and then have absolutely nothing in another area. So I want to fill the space with the same denseness of quilting. And um, so I'm going to throw in feather feathers <clears throat> I have flowers, leaves, and swirls in here, so that's my goal, so. And then I'm echoing around the little flowers. Okay, now I'm going to work on the inner border, which is this blue border here. I'm going to do a leaf in here, and the thread I have switched over to um, this is Omni thread, and the color is cream. So I'm going to use that and uh, just do a little leaf. All the way through this border so um, I'll just go ahead and get started on that and let me see I'm gonna come back to automatic I was on 61% but I'm gonna start in automatic and I'm at 12 stitches per inch and the batting that I am using is an 8020 batting and it's made by Fairfield it's called quilters 8020 
Okay, I'm going to start by working on uh, the setting triangles here. And I went ahead and I, I'm using my arch ruler here. This is the arch guide by um, Linda's Electric Quilters. And it's uh, like a 12 inch wide ruler so it fits these 12 inch blocks really well. And I went ahead and did my first uh, round of quilting. So you can see the lines that are in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and echo those because I want a little breathing space between the quilting design I'm gonna do here and what I'm doing in here. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get my threads secured. And then I'm gonna line up my ruler with the previous stitching line. And then, <clears throat> okay, I'm stopping here because my hopping foot is touching the next, uh, the other side of the quilting. So I want to go ahead and stop there and then go around. So um, I'm going to go ahead and quilt this. tie off my thread and then I'm going to put some feathers in here so the feathers are going to start down here at this point and go out so um, my goal is to not cross over into this little channel here so when I'm bringing my feathers back. I don't want the tails of the feathers to go across that line. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, it means I'm gonna have to watch a little bit closer what I'm doing. So I'm gonna stay in stitch regulated mode and I'm on 12 stitches per inch. I always like my feathers better when I'm at a little faster speed, but since I'm wanting to be very careful, I needed to be at a slower speed. I needed to slow down. So let me cut those tails and then come back over and do the other side. for this part here I'm just going to do some vertical lines and there are different ways you can do this um, you can mark all of these lines if you want to and to do that I would get one of my quilting rulers okay if I mark these first it'll speed up the quilting if um, I don't mark them the quilting will take quite a bit longer um, but to get them perpendicular, I'm going to use a horizontal line on my ruler. And mark. And I want to go every half inch. And you can make these as close together or as far apart as you want. Sorry about the 
traffic noise. It's a Saturday, so people are out and about. And we have some neighbors who have teenagers, so every once in a while you get um, a hot rod. Okay, I'm only going to go about that far. I'm not going to worry about that little bit over there, so now I need to do this side. Um, now I do have this ruler here that has markings on it and it's marked up to an inch so I could do um, use the line the second line here which will give me a half inch mark the second line here um, which works it works really good when I'm going this way but I'd have to, to quilt over t um, from center to the left which means I would be crossing my hands between the machine and holding my ruler And that gets a little bit awkward, so. I will finish marking. And my husband just ran to the store to get some bread and he's just back, so. That clunking noise you hear is his boots on the hardwood floor upstairs. So, all right, to about there. Okay, so now I can start here and go all the way across. Okay, there is the completed block, and I'm real happy with the way that turned out. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the rest of that row, and uh, then move on to the piece blocks. Now the layout of this quilt is the blocks are on point, and they're right next to each other. I don't have an alternate block between them, so it's just... Um, one block is meeting the other at the corner here and then this block is meeting the side of the block down at the angle there so I don't have um, a lot of empty space to fill in it's just the blocks well my air conditioner has kicked on and it's very noisy in the studio so I am going to go ahead and voice over here now what I'm doing is marking the center of those two sides of the block as well as uh, one inch marks on the leaves there I've got already the points of the triangles that are 
guideline for me and I just needed a couple extra marks and that is going to be for the straight line stitching that I'm doing. Now I'm going to do kind of a cross hatch and uh, with a mix of a square and a square in the center of the block here. So I need my ruler and um, I'll do that here in just a minute. Right now I'm going to do some uh, quilting in the background. So I've got my little uh, ruler here and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. I found with the first block that I did that it did look better with some stitch in the ditch. So I'm going to do that. And that little ruler is um, a handy quilter scalloped edge ruler and it has a, a nice guide on one end on the straight side that helps you do um, stitch in the ditch. So I like that it's about six inches long and two and a half to three inches wide, something like that. And it's a good size. So we're just gonna scoot on over and just fill in all the the background there. Now on that top blue square, I'm just doing a cross hatch in there. So one line from point to point on both corners there and then do some quarter inch outline stitching within the blue triangles. So the blue triangles and the cream colored triangles will get the same quilting design. And I'm just working my way around the block stitching in the, in the ditch and getting where I want to go. And I do quite a bit of stitch in the ditch on this block. I didn't do that in the English Ivy table topper, um, but with this quilt, it's just something I felt it needed to have. So here we're gonna do, um, I did the cross hatch across one side and now I'm gonna quilt uh, just a square in there going from corner to corner. And here I'm checking my marks again because I am using an air soluble marker on uh, that print fra fabric in the it's purple so in the purple on top of that red was just a little bit hard to see so I wanted to make sure I was getting the right mark there so now I'm going to go down I believe from nope I'm going to go across <laughs> so I'm just finishing up the square and a square design here So the first couple blocks that I quilted in, uh, it took me a little while to work out the design. And um, I did use my plastic overlay and worked out all of these designs beforehand. But when you get to actually quilting them, um, sometimes you decide to change things a little bit. And then other times, you know, you'd follow things exactly the way you want, had them on your um draft on the on the plastic so here I'm going to do some feathers in the background I was actually trying to avoid doing very many feathers in this quilt but um, this is kind of a, a vintage looking quilt just because of the block design and the fabrics that are in it because these these are uh, fabrics from Jane Austen at home and so they are printed from um, designs within our home, whether it is fabric or um, wallpaper. And um, that's what they're based off of. So it is um, kind of a late 18, I guess 1880s. I'm not sure exactly what the era was, but they are, they are vintage prints. So um, it just kind of has more of an elegant look and I've felt they needed some feathers I just wasn't wanting to do a whole lot of feathers but I wound up doing more than what I planned so just taking my time in getting those feathers in and um, doing stitch in the ditch wherever I needed to and then going back in and uh, working on other areas here I'm, I'm doing more stitch in the ditch and then doing the straight line quilting in those leaves there. In the table topper I only did I think one line of quilting in those 
smaller leaves in those smaller triangles there but I felt this quilt was going to need a little bit more and that's all trying to balance all the quilting throughout the quilt so feathers are a dense quilting and if I don't make the rest of the quilting in the quilt close to that denseness the, the quilt has a funny feel to it when you're handling it it, it feels kind of floppy um, and it just really looks off balance so um, I just felt it needed a little extra quilting in it and all I had to do was just add a couple extra lines of quilting and that balanced it out now when I get towards the end of the quilt of the quilting on this quilt I'll look it over and decide if I need to add any additional quilting sometimes I go ahead and do that and sometimes I feel it's fine and doesn't need anything else so we'll see on this one so going back and now I'm going to do the next leaf so I'm hitting those marks I put in with my pen and using the points as another guideline and then getting that all quilted in and you can tell I'm going pretty slow here and that's due to the fact that I'm using a ruler and the fact that um, this is I think the second block that I had quilted so I'm not real familiar with it yet it usually takes me two to three blocks to feel comfortable enough that I can speed up a little bit and uh, not make a mess of things so um, just taking my time and you can tell I'm on stitch regulated mode I'm, I usually am when I am using uh, a ruler and that helps prevent me from accidentally running over that ruler or chipping it or um, hitting it wrong with the needle or something so this quilt will take me probably the rest of the week to get done I'm not going to have it all finished in this video I, I think I got about halfway done before I needed to quit on it um, and I did put several hours into it in uh, over a course of two days and is not working continuously I cannot work on um, a project this big from beginning to end with this much quilting in it in one day's time I have um, back issues and I have to quit after about about an hour and a half to two hours max I have to stop and give my back a rest or I'm in uh, pain for a couple of days and when I'm in pain I can't quilt so that kind of defeats the purpose so I take my breaks when I need to and that way I can actually get more work done that way so in this area of the block this is the stem unit of the block um, I had done feathers in the table topper and this one I decided I needed to do more straight line quilting um, and that is to carry through what is going on in the setting triangles with all of those straight lines going through that those triangles I felt they needed to be repeated somewhere else in the quilt so I decided that was a good place to put them because the stem makes a straight line and it's running in the same direction as the uh, lines in the setting triangles on the top and the bottom of the quilt so those are just copying that so I'm quilting right along the edge of that stem which is machine applique on and then going out a half an inch from there and right here I did not draw my lines in this section I'm just using the lines that are on my ruler and lining those up with the previous line of stitching and then uh, quilting it in so go ahead and quilt that up and then move, move the machine over and line up the ruler on top of the previous stitching and then stitch the line down now you can use your channel locks also on your machine if you have them and uh, quilt them in that way and uh, that helps keep all your lines perpendicular and uh, it just there is just another tool that you can use so I am almost done with this block here and so you can see it did take um, a little bit of time 
but when you're doing a custom quilting job, um, it does take time. And I would call this a high-end custom. It verges on the border of being heirloom quilting. So anytime I am doing feathers in this kind of dense quilting, um, I call this a high-end custom job. So there is uh, pretty much the block. I have to go back and fill in the uh, points here, the triangles on the, the top part of the block. So on this section, I have to do the background and on the section next to it, then I have to do the blue triangles. So this block, I had not figured out how to get all the way around the block without stopping and starting just yet. I do eventually figure that out, but you know, it's just like any other quilt that I do. It will take me a block or two to get that figured out. I don't always get that figured out ahead of time. And on this one, this block, I did not, I did not have that figured out. So just going to finish up these two little triangles and then that block should be finished. So this uh, quilt is turning out really pretty and I'm really happy with it. And um, when I get the quilt done, I will do um, a short video on that and show that to you. So here now I can tie off my threads and uh, give you a look at the block. And I will have a couple of photos here at the end of this section uh, where you can see the quilting that I have done so far in the quilt. Okay, here is the first photo of one of the blocks that I completed. You can see at the top a little bit of the leaf border that I did and you can see all the texture that this quilting is adding to the quilt. So you can see it makes a pretty huge difference. Well, that is it for this video. Um, I am still not finished with the quilt, the English Ivy quilt, but um, hopefully I will get that completed sometime this week to see how the schedule goes. I am back to work full days at my day job, so I don't have as much time to uh, work on quilts right now. So um, this past year and a couple of months, I've been working from home, so whenever I took a break from my job, I could come down and quilt or so for a few minutes and then go back up stairs to my computer but I don't have that luxury right now so things are going to be a little bit harder to get done but they'll get there so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up and in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.